Happy Friday. Um, just get me over there. <coughs> Happy Friday. Um, short one yesterday. <laughs> Nobody watching me, but it's, it was a short one. Anyway, today might be a bit longer, but I'm going to have a new technique. Actually, I'm just going to have an experiment. Because we're using acrylics, we can work from um, like in that one where uh, yesterday we we work from light to dark so your your yellows and your siennas and your warm colours are the ones you put on first and we use the transparency of the paper that's why you've got this highlight and then we go darker and we use colours as well to put in the darker shapes uh, keeping it less than 12 actual shapes they say about less than 12 shapes it could be it starts to make it more abstract you know how can i believe that or not but i mean it does work if you the lower number of shapes you can produce in a painting just using uh shapes from the landscape or whatever you're painting then um, the more abstract it becomes yeah so it probably is a good policy to think that way okay but today i'm going to do something uh quite oily type thing because um we can use it like oil paint. Uh, I don't know if it's going to turn out, but we'll just have it. I'm just going to do a bit of splattering and things. Uh, it's quite a dark picture, and the sunlight is behind uh, the clouds facing you, so everything is in a kind of silhouette uh, with a halo around it. I mean, the plants, the trees, everything's got this lovely kind of yellow uh, around it and in it, and it's just speckles of colour. Uh, so I'm thinking about doing it kind of in two halves do a, uh, but I'm using black as well today so I'm going to be using black ultramarine blue uh, uh, white um, it might be a bit of white because of your clouds uh, so the black gives our greys as well so I know I don't use black a lot but I'm going to put black on first actually to get rid of all this white paper black and blue and even a bit of purple um, and just to give us some lovely um, lovely darks in it which is what I'm after and then uh, creating the speckled effect with uh, with a spat step stippling brush and flicking paint and using paper to you know use the paper to kind of put the shapes on anyway i'm going to see what happens and uh, see if we can make it uh, interesting yeah uh if you think about the shapes in this one we've got sky got mountains uh full grain mountains and then you your foreground and it's like there's only five four or five shapes yeah uh distinctive shapes and it's not going to be abstract but uh it might be you never know you just keep it simple uh it's an introduction to acrylic so we can actually see you know um what's happening anyway i've got my big uh, uh big brush yeah uh and i've got some black paint and i've got some uh, purple so I'm going to mix these together and you put these in this lovely kind of landscape and I want to put some blue up here as well so I'm going to put the blue in like that, over the top uh, it's quite it's not thick and I'm, I'm working this paint into the paper to give me that uh, so it, it dries up quick as well and, I, and I've got purple and blue um, <coughs> you know, in that area you can actually put a bit of white with that but I don't, uh, don't recommend it but anyway. well, we've got a shape of, <coughs> excuse me, a shape of the sky anyway, big brush plenty of black uh, more purple and then just come down uh, to the bottom of the picture that's all um, so from this dark tone, this is kind of really nice uh, black. But it's not black, it's got colour because it's got purple and blue in it. So because of this nice flat dark area, we are all we're going to do is paint light. Yeah? So where we use uh, a mid-tone value a lot of the time, uh, when you paint with black, um, and splat it with yellow the um, the yellow becomes green so you know we can create these lovely uh, splattering green shapes 
that a representation of what we're looking at. I don't know, but I'm going to use some of these classes just to experiment myself a bit. Uh, I'm not in the studio lately. Uh, and he's taking over physical classes, taking over workshops. We're coming back, which is great. Um, got quite a lot of workshops coming up this year. Places I should have done in 2000. Um, and people are still ringing me. We're good. But there you go, can you see? Um, I put some dark in there because that's where there's a lovely big black cloud as well. Okay. Now, um, get rid of that brush. Probably won't need that again because I'm not going to paint in black anymore. I'm just going to be painting uh, anything lighter than that. Alright, so um, we'll dry it a little bit around the edges. This, so I'm going to just stretch it a bit because it's cockles. Uh, let's pull the tape. That's what we usually do. Right. Now then, pull the tape like Gary. Pull it and then stick it down again. If we can. Running over on your fingernail over the edge and then we've got this section in the middle I need to do the same with that pull down and stick pull down and stick should get rid of most of your big bubbly areas it's just stretching the paper it's like watercolour paper really when you stretch it it's just doing the same job because it expands a bit when it gets wet so you can pull it Okay, so that's more or less the kind of flat shape. Uh, get that brush out of the way. I want something to kind of uh, sketch with now. Small brush actually, um, just to do a bit of sketching. Uh, I'll use a bit of blue, blue and white. Yeah, <laughs> because it's going to be a lot of blue and white in the sky, and we've got this area here, which is going to be, you know. Something like that where we've got this lovely cloud. It's just catching the light. Okay. And then we're coming down here and we're getting this lovely kind of blue shape. Um, the first thing I need to do is just find out where this, this kind of mountain is. So we're coming up here like that. And then down to the centre of your picture. And here we've got the blue mountain. In the background, go the way it is, but it doesn't matter. We're just using the image. And then we've got another kind of mountain here, um, which goes in that direction. Uh, across here, this comes down, that goes that way. And then this is the blue bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and the horizon line, somewhere about kind of here. Okay, so I'm kind of trying to use a uh, thick pen. I'm going to use some blue and white. So it's quite a bit of blue in this because we've got this really nice uh, uh, mountain in the background, which is purplish, bluish, thick pigment. Yeah, uh, I want that lovely reflection of light on the left hand side of it. I don't have to kind of get it perfect because I can uh, paint the sky around that later and make it more perfect but it's thicker pigment so I want to, to cover up uh, me black actually like that. 
uh, probably when it dries I need to do more uh, so that's uh, can add a little bit of purple with that as well just to give me some darks at the top uh, just to blend into me the blue uh, same over here you see so that's that lovely uh, dark uh, kind of bluish tone uh, what's happening though I'm getting uh, I'm getting more kind of uh, reflections or bluish kind of light on this side uh, coming this way so you can put this as it's coming down to the horizon line it's going a little bit lighter not the horizon line this side of the mountain so it goes a little bit lighter so we can paint that nice light shape you can see like that so that's the side of the mountain lovely purples uh, keep this one as well so where it hits the mountain it's lighter like that uh, it's quite nice working on just uh, just tonal paper just keeping it simple uh, and then you got these lovely shapes in the tops of the hills which we don't really need um, so the first thing I'm going to do now is get my little I'll have a big bush again so I'm going to use the same one um, I'm looking across the sky area which is a lot of white yeah so we've got if you kind of put thicker pigment on you're going to get stronger whites can you see uh, same like that so we've got that lovely light just against the cloud so if I come down here I can scratch uh, we can go, have a few shapes here this is like the edge of this lovely purplish cloud uh, something there that's quite blue that's that was intentional you see leaving that blue there you could do with a bit more blue actually so there's a touch of white with it but I want more kind of blue in there uh, just to bring out that uh, sky blue shape okay you can you see uh, and that's going off the picture as well so mix it on your palette first because you want it to be a flat tone uh, you can always blend it with your finger or something else so this is this lovely kind of bluish ultramarine blue this one uh, now let's go in down to it's coming down to about here uh, it's going quite uh, quite nice blue again uh, around that uh, shape and then we can leave that and move away to say something over here so I could just put that in and there's a bit there you see these blue shapes I'm just dropping them in here and there got some over here to do like that and we've got purple so we can leave that as purple uh, and the blue hills which are going to be darker at the top so darker at the top later at the bottom clean your brush so initially I'll start with quite a bit of water yeah um, so I want to create this uh, really nice faint edge first we can use some purple as well because so we've got the purple in there uh, in this area and blend it yeah you can see some purple underneath and things like that and then we're going white again so we've got white well, it's not pure white but it's uh, it's a lot of water in it as well so we've got this lovely shape is it uh, and that's coming down under this hill uh, going that direction blend it and then it comes down to the mountain it disappears behind the mountain there um, just squint take your glasses off so you see the lovely kind of shapes can you see anything in between then is uh, purple sky uh, we can we can just lighten a bit because you've got the purple there anyway and as you're coming down to the mountain then got these lovely kind of shapes again just be careful so we're coming to the mountain and they're going a lot lighter 
right? So that's bringing out these shapes on the top of the mountain like that. You see, in the distance. Uh, and then we can blend them with some other shapes here. They are quite, oops, touch the paper, sorry. Go on like that. Go on that then. Get some tissue. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going around places using the side of my brush, making kind of irregular marks like that, but uh, placed in areas that I can see where the sky is. Uh, and then we've got brighter areas, can you see? As you're coming up here, uh, and next to this blue, it's because it's lovely and light. Uh, we're using the side of the brush again. So I've got thicker paint areas, thinner paint areas. Blend it with your finger or a tissue, you just scumble it in. Uh, and then this goes off the picture. It's quite light actually. It's going off into the sky somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, so that that has gone a little bit. Um, darker as it's dry, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's put it back in. Yeah, we can use the, the white to um, to go over it later, like this. Um, don't let your brush dry out, you know, that's the main thing. So, I could put uh, we'll go down here around the mountain, uh, and then we'll, we'll just scumble that in. Because it's nice and blend it over there, okay? You want it to blend a little bit as well. You don't just want it to be a straight edge. So the shape of this mountain is being uh, sculpted by the clouds in the background. Like that. So we're getting these lovely kind of little shapes. You see? Blend it. Use your finger. And again, we've got a nice big white shape here. Uh, we've got something in between, which is like a purple cloud, you see? Um, and then we've got these, just these little bits of light. So where you've got the blue sky, here, for instance, we've got this kind of light area of cloud next to it. Best of there. Dry brush, clean your brush, never know again, just to keep the moisture in it. Uh, we don't want a lot of water though. And then we're just gonna look at this area. So that's a little bit lighter now. Uh, and as you're coming up here, that's lighter. And you're coming up here, and this is a little bit softer where we're getting to the blue. I see. Uh -huh. It's all about negative space, like negative shapes. Uh -huh. Squint. Take your glasses off. Something like that, and this lovely depth to it. Yeah. Don't forget all the time, these clouds are going to uh, disappear. I've done it again. In places, they're going to be lovely and bright in other places, and then they're going to be soft and subtle. In other places, this is what gives you this lovely depth. Yeah, um, we're coming around here now. There's a lot of cloud here. Uh, I'm trying not to get lost. Uh, this comes down to the top of this kind of hill. And then like a sort of a peak there, and then we'll go down to the cloud again. A bit more water. You see? Ah. Squint. Uh, we go up to here. Uh, just curve it a bit. Nice and light. It's going to dry like that because it's quite wet. But then once I've gone around it, I can go darker after. I'll go later. And I take this into these kind of regular shapes. Um, and then the purple bit again up here. Right. Keep standing back. 
have a look at it from a distance. We want that lovely kind of light, don't we? Get a bit of blue. Uh, I'm going to put some blue over this shape with a bit of white, sorry. Blue and white, just to give me some blue shapes over here. It's a kind of softer. Like as well. Uh, we've got some darker blue as well. Drying quite quick in here because it's hot. Uh, some blues in there, we've got purples, so we can get some purple. Again, nice and dark. <coughs> Excuse me, mix the blue with that. <coughs> with the background tones. Uh, actually, you can have a bit of black, that black in there, it's lovely actually. Purple there, purple here. <coughs> Excuse me, more blue. Uh, drag this up. You can see it in the distant mountains. A lovely blue shed. Okay, I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll go on to our mountain. Uh, I'm going to use some more black, pure black. Uh, now, because I want to just bring out some darker tones in these clouds, yeah? uh, especially where they're on the edges. And that's giving me this really lovely kind of uh, soft edge as well. And then it blends into the rest of the black. Can you see? So we're creating this depth, if you like. Some of those black clouds are coming over. Um, this one, for instance, is very, very dark. Like that, as it comes down here into the purple background. Sounds back, yeah. You don't have to keep using the fair same brush. <coughs> uh, it's quite faint, it's gone a lot fainter. So we've um, going to use another brush, um, a bit bigger actually, sorry I should have got one out, bristly one, need a bristly one, to put in some kind of stippling, uh, can you see, uh, it's just kind of around the edges, so this is pure, pure white pigment. There we are. Again, I'm just looking at the edges of things, where the white is going to be. Top of the mountain. And we've got this really strong area of light. Coming across. Again. Squint, comes all the way down here. Because I've been uh, putting dark tones in, now I start adding the lights and it will, the really pure whites, because they've been watered down a bit, so. The whites were watered down, so that's why I'm getting this lovely kind of areas. Try to brush it, yeah, blend it. Um, down here, beautiful left hand side all the time, yeah, keep it on the left hand side of these clouds, like that, and coming down here, you can use the side of the brush, go do that, done it again, move the tissue now. and then we can roll this up. Let's 
kind of stippling brush this okay keep adding those shapes especially down to the mountain and there and that brings out that mountain top I can see beautiful um, here again and this goes up to this bit which is quite strong white yeah and um, this goes over here like that again quite strong white and we've got this very strong area like that keep looking through from a, a distance as well uh, so we get a really beautiful kind of light got a bit of purple on this one uh, just for these areas over here because they're a bit purplish and there's a bit here as well a bit over this side kind of blue and purple so it's not it's not quite strong but we can just about make it out in the blue and the purple. Like that, and a bit under here. Squinting all the time. Squinting. Put a bit in the mountain as well. Give it a bit of depth. This is that lovely dark cloud. Okay. You have a smaller brush. A bit of detail. And just having a look at this area. And that blue sky. Because it's nice. A nice shape now, actually. It's coming up to here. All around the blue sky. And then this is quite light. Soft white. Slightly darker. Pigment. And keep building this up. Okay. You're going to get lost now and again. That's all. All we need to do is keep get a rough area of tone. Like that. <coughs> These beautiful, very strong lights at first. Clouds moving as well. Movement. Okay, coming down to our mountain again. Nice light. Lovely tones, flat bottoms, flat bottoms for some clouds. Scumblet. I've got the majority of the, uh, the clouds in and the white, so uh, quite happy with that now. Okay, lovely softness. We can let that dry and just have a look at it later. Um, let's see how it goes on. Stand back, have a drink, drink of water. That needs to dry, okay? Now I'm going to put a cool wash of um, green, which I haven't got out, sorry, 
I don't want to use a lot of green, I know it sounds stupid, but I don't want to use lots of green because there's not a lot of green in it. So I've got my green, I've got my blue, I want turquoise, okay? I've also got my black there, so that's fine. Uh, so I can put this turquoise colour in, like this. And go into the mountain. Okay. And as I get up here, it goes black. So I'm going to pick up some black and then go into my mountain here. Make it darker. Okay. Nice against that. Uh, In there. Then it goes kind of blue, blue again, blue green, nice and black at the top, and then black down here. So pick up your green and your blue. Uh, look at the subtle kind of tones, and then as we're coming forward, we're going a little bit lighter. Okay. Uh, with a touch of white with our green. So in this I've got this really nice green effect. Ah. Stippling really, nothing too bright. We just need to create that uh, light catching some of the trees in the distance. The same thing happening over here a little bit. And then as you're coming forward the trees are going lighter. So I'm just stippling a little bit and then we're going warmer over here. Alright. Um, so again we're having yellow with our green. Okay. And then we can Stipple this in, this gives us a shape like that. It's kind of the edges of everything. Isn't it? This is going to be a, a big tree in the middle. Right. And then I've got these blobs again. So right in the distance here, it's got these lovely kind of blobs. Brush. You've got these lovely blobs of trees right. on the horizon bit, you can see. There. And we've got teeny bush, a bit yellow, touch of white. Okay. So we want to hail all of them. Right. See, in the distance, you get these trees that are catching the light that's in the distance there. Uh, coming down the mountain. Dragging colour. Drag some colour. Come back. Yeah. While I'm at it now, I'm going to use a palette knife. Get some yellow, mix that green and yellow together. Get the white with it. Okay, so in the distance here, we've got a lovely kind of light catching the field and then it comes in there, like that. Got the same light around here. 
two. We get to this tree and we go and the light around the tree. Again, I'm using the palette knife to give me textures, to give me shapes. Just like that, and round things. You can use the side of your palette knife. Like that. And then uh, so this is this uh, tree tree here. This is um, going right near the grass. This um, tree. Uh -huh. Okay, up. So here we've got some nice blue it's reflecting off the side of the mountain. Uh, the slopes up here as well, slightly cooler coming towards you. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so, and then we've got this bigger tree here, um, which I might not bother painting properly. I'm just going to put it in because it's got it's got some sienna mixed in it. It's kind of a warmer colour. So we've got this big shape, yeah, like that. Don't want it too light yet. Big shape, okay. <coughs> Don't splash yourself. <coughs> I'm going to keep putting them, put them in my pocket, keep it nice and level That's the floor. Alright, so in the distance, I've actually got a little bush, a toothbrush, that I'm going to start to flick paint with it. Okay, anything in the distance, I can use a toothbrush because. It gives you little marks, okay? So we have a little bit of water and then we brush. So all the way from kind of here. If you want to, you can mask off. Kind of mask off. See? So when you put the yellow or the black A lovely kind of spotty effect. Very, very fine splatters. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to add bigger splatters. Use the same yellow, the water, touch of the white. Okay. Going over here. Round that tree, round this tree, and then I'm going slightly bigger. So I went bigger blobs. It's a technical term. Scratch it with your thumb so the light's catching all this greenery. Okay, so I have got a 
a stippling brush as well as a toothbrush. Uh, this is my stippling brush. If I do the same thing, less water, more pigment. Yeah, add a bit of white with it as well. And then this one should be bigger blobs. Against my black, you can see. <coughs> so that's bringing it forward a bit more. Because the bigger blobs, a little bit lighter, and then uh, nice big shapes. You can see. from angular like stippling technique <coughs> <coughs> okay we're going to save galloping here now I'm going to start using a brush uh, just to create um, these feathery shapes of the drums of these beautiful, um, excuse me. So we've got this uh, Big so this is the a pointy brush. We can do this as well. Okay, give us some foreground stuff in the foreground because there's a lot of yellow there. Okay, so I'm going to pick up quite a bit. <laughs> and then add some films. Shapes. Stronger colour. Okay, it's your interpretation, that's all. Come back. <coughs> 10 minutes, 22. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful light. Okay, um, more yellow, touch more white. So we haven't used any. any uh, green. Well I have, I've used a bit of green in that, but uh, not used any green over here. All right, and then um, I'm just painting bits. I'm trying to paint bits around that tree because that tree is quite dark. So if I let the grass be the negative shape, 
Yeah, yeah, these lovely kind of straight lines where, where the light, where the fields uh, change. So it's like, yeah. Very strong colour. Same here. So I could use a beautiful. Because it's quite big blobs anyway there. The only problem with brushes is you can't get the same random mark. Because you've got to sort of try to paint things. I'll give you an impression. Um, so this is the other side of the tree. In the tree you get uh, some branches catching some light. Alright, I can give it a smudge here and there. That gives it a bit of light around this tree. And like that. Again, have a look at your foreground. More white. More yellow. Lovely strong, strong. Okay, so some of them will be light, and some of them will be catching a lot of light. Some of them will be darkening. So keep those dark ones. I'm just doing. Ferns in your foreground. Fern cotton. Uh, you're getting some light areas as well. So here, for instance, it's going bigger as well. There's a mixture of light. What we've actually got there is a road, which I've only seen. <laughs> Got a road just coming in from the right, but uh, it's hardly noticeable, so I won't put it in. If you want to put it in, you can put it out. <laughs> and it's lovely, bright yellow. No green in it. Okay. No green. It's blue. around this uh, negative space in areas just to bring out the clouds because they're a bit, uh, a bit dark you know you want that blue to represent the sky back up here yeah, it's a little bit lighter so that's what we do just put a blob in lighten it up a bit give it a blend and this one Just 
you can just carry on and carry on, can't you? Building it up. Build it up until you get what you're looking for. And if you don't know what you're looking for, <laughs> stop. Stop. Dead. Never let it go again. Okay. Like that. Nice stick paint again. For the clouds. Coming in. Beautiful blue. So I've got a nice blob here, lots of like nice blob there. Uh, little blobs here. Of the mountains. Doing detail, tree brush, make up some white, <laughs> and then bring it down to the mountain. Beautiful white. keep going with the white really until you get this really nice uh, I like the top of the mountain like <laughs> so every time you put that in it uh, it's a little bit lighter when you get to pure white okay I think there's a little bit of blue, bluey green in this uh, mountain actually. Uh, Add some light near the bottom. And it gets reflected lights, you see. So it wants uh, kind of reflected lights. So uh, just at the bottom of the mountain. So you know there's a valley at the other side. Okay. Paint up. <laughs> I'll keep this. Uh... Strong highlight. The side of the cloud. Just bring it out like that.
There you go. <laughs> Just carry on, carry on. Reinforce. Those whites. So yeah, it has worked near enough. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to leave it there. Right? Have a look at it later. Might go later with uh, my splatters. There's quite a few more up there. I've got my splattering stipple brush. A bit more white. Yeah. You need water. Because it is gone from the brush to your picture. Uh. Bigger marks. And you get a messy finger. <laughs> okay. I will leave it. It's worked all right. It's your. Um, you can go more detail with the brush. Um, I'll probably just stop because I'm quite happy with the light on the the floor. Probably brighten up the foreground. This is a lot brighter now, don't see? Some of the spawn and get a tape off there. Let me see. So it's just a stippling effect. Yeah, that's what you can create. Hardly any brush marks apart from the clouds. So the clouds probably the hardest part of the picture, really. And then, uh, and then that's going to dry, so you'll probably be going back into the clouds. Pure light later. Nice darks in your foreground. Uh, when you barely start, it's going to stand out like mad. Okay, there you go. Lovely landscape, cloudy sky, a volcanic kind of landscape, isn't it? And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you were watching, were watching, one watching, and uh, see you next Tuesday for last nine. Bye for now.